The laity ought to understand the faith, and since the doctrines of our faith are in the scriptures, believers should have the scriptures in a language familiar to the people. The reasons for the Reformation, next, on So What? Hi, I'm Don Waite. And I'm Chris Dorman. And welcome back to So What? So last week, Chris, we had the opportunity to uh, round out our discussion of what really toiled and prepared the soil for the Reformation. And so we talked about uh, the geopolitical nature of Europe and what was going on uh, politically. And then we also talked about the corruption that was pervasive in the church. Again, not that every uh, leader in the church was corrupt, but there was a pervasive corruption that was occurring. And the yeah. people saw it, Chris. Yeah. The people started really seeing this. And in seeing this, we now need to look at some groups of people that acted on, on convictions in their heart. Yeah. Yeah. What was, again, preparing the soil. Exactly. And I think that's a good way of saying it, Don. They were preparing the soil. They were preparing the soil that Martin Luther used to spread the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Back in 1174, 1174, 340 years before the Reformation, there was a guy in France by the name of Peter Waldo. He was a very wealthy merchant who became convinced that he was not living faithfully to Christ. And he felt that there was something really wrong with him spiritually, and he didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like a good Catholic, he went to his priest, confessed his sin, confessed his struggle, and it's purported that the priest told him, just read him the Gospel of Matthew and said, what did Jesus tell the rich young ruler? Go, sell your possessions, give to the poor, and then come and follow me. Well, Peter Waldo was a rich guy. He thought, you know what? Maybe I'm just caught up in the carnality. You know, I've got all my stuff, and maybe that's what's killing my spiritual life. He set aside funds for his family, and he gave away everything else and submitted himself to voluntary poverty, to free himself, to live as Jesus did. He lived on the scraps that people gave him. And, Amazing. And he began to, and he was convinced, too, that others would share his convictions if they only knew what the Bible said. Well, he thought that it was important that people understood the Bible and that they, were give, they, they could be taught the Bible in their native language, which was awesome. not permitted. It was, not, it was illegal to do that, but he didn't care. He felt compelled to teach the gospel in the language of the people. So he had Bibles printed in the language of the people. He had it translated from the Latin to the language of the people, and then trained up people who shared his convictions, who went out two by two to preach the gospel in the language of the people, to show them the love of Christ, the life of Christ, that they might live as Jesus and the apostles did, that wow. they might live righteously That's for awesome. God, to honor God. And he went, he, he sought papal approval. And in 1179, he was given permission by the Pope to for his voluntary poverty and to share the truth with the people, provided his local bishops were okay with it. Right. The local bishops weren't. They didn't. They didn't like. Imagine someone, that. They didn't like someone preaching in the language of the people, and they said, "No, you can't preach." And he said, "Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. I must obey God rather than men." And he kept preaching. And that, unfortunately, in 1179, the Pope said, "You're okay." By 1184, he was he was excommunicated, and after that, for hundreds of years, lots of persecution. The Waldensians, though, were not limited to France. They spread throughout Europe. Yeah. People were coming to see that there were differences between what the church taught and what the scriptures taught. And they were encouraged to believe the Bible as the sole authority. Right. The that, fire could not be put out. That could not be put out. It could not be put out. So the Waldensians spread and spread and spread yeah. despite terrible, terrible persecution. Which leads us to Mr. John Wycliffe. Uh, born in the 1320s, John Wycliffe was an Englishman who was an Oxford guy. He was an academic. He was well respected not only in the church but also uh, by the leaders uh, in, in yeah. yeah the government yeah. there in England. Uh, and in fact, actually went on trips uh, on behalf of England to yeah. France uh, to help them uh, w with tensions between England and, and France. I mean, yeah. this guy was very well respected. But again, this guy had a conviction, a yeah. deep-seated conviction, that the only way to deliver the truth of the gospel in the scripture is in the native tongue. He absolutely believed that we should hear it the same way that the apostles heard it, in their language. Latin. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> their language. Right. Yeah. right, in their language, Greek at the time, in his day, English, right? And so he 
translated from the Latin, the Bible, into English so people could have access to the Word of God and yeah. the hope of the Gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. How awesome is right. that? And the church was thrilled! Uh, well, yeah, no, not, not so really. much, not really. right? But there were people in the church, some laymen, that were really excited. Very excited. They started being called lollards, which uh, apparently was kind of a derogatory term. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but doesn't neither here nor there. These guys had a passion for the Word of God, and not just to read it for themselves, but to go out and proclaim the gospel and yeah. the hope and the good news of Jesus in the streets in the native tongue. Yeah. How awesome is that? Yeah. You're like, oh wow, yeah. this is great. We're gonna have more believers. This is great. Right. No, not so much. People condemned it. There were leaders in the church that thought it dangerous. Yeah. In my estimation, most likely because they felt in danger of their own livelihood. Mm-hmm. My conjecture, maybe, yeah. but. But ultimately, they came down hard on that. In fact, they said that the scriptures being given to the people in their own language was so degrading that it was like throwing pearls before swine, Chris. Yeah. And specifically, there was a dude that, that yeah. talked about yeah. uh, the access of women. Yeah, that women having the word of God was a terrible thing. Right. Yeah, it was like cast, it was casting your pearls to pigs. Yeah. The idea that the laity, right, the common folks like you and I, would have access to the Bible, something we take for granted today, was seen as a dangerous thing. He said, they're making sport of the Bible, yeah. right? They couldn't possibly understand it for themselves. Yeah. But it, it makes me think, faith comes by hearing the Word of God, right? Yeah. That's Romans chapter 10, yep. right? That's right. How will I know unless somebody brings it? Let the Bible be heard in the native tongue. How right. awesome is that? But, but again, those, that was radical, radical thinking. That was yes. actually illegal thinking of, yep. in the day. It was. Yeah. yeah, there were decrees against it. Yeah, Absolutely totally. dangerous, yep. cannot do it. Yep. Yep. But, you know, again, the fire couldn't be put out, Chris. That's right. And so the Lollards, not unlike the Waldensians, they continued to grow and to propagate, and, and this idea Despite was out there. Despite being, ter- being terribly Terrible. persecuted like the Waldensians. Right. The Lollards were horribly right. persecuted, but it didn't matter. Trial by fire. They would not stop preaching right. the gospel. So, so Wycliffe ultimately died of a seizure. Yep. He died had of a stroke. stroke. Yep. And, and, and he uh, died before they could get their hands on him. Right. But the movement didn't stop. No, it did not stop. And, and ultimately, and we, we'll talk about this council later, but the council out in um, Constance. Constance, they said, hey, we better exhume this dude's bones and burn them yeah. and spread his ashes into the river, right, so that the, it would just, there'd be no, nothing known of him ever again. They Never didn't again. want him uh, buried in a holy site, right. right, because he wasn't a holy man in their estimation, and we're going to burn his bones. Can you imagine that, having somebody... Dig up the bones and For, do that? Forty years after the guy was dead, they dug him out of the ground and burned his bones. Just to prove the point that this guy's a heretic and we're going to burn his to bones. To show how much the church condemned what he believed. Okay. But j- just like his ashes were carried down the river, through the tributaries, out into the ocean, and spread throughout the world... This idea of the scripture for the people and by the people. In the language of the people. Right? It spread. spread. It spread. spread. And that's one of the hallmarks of the Reformation. One of the big reasons why Martin Luther got in trouble. He said, look, the Bible should be in German. It should be in a language that the people understand. Wow. Wow. And if you have a Bible in any language other than Latin, then you have a better idea today who you should be thankful for. Some great men and women who sacrificed everything. Everything. That you might have the Bible in a language you can understand. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. And I'll talk to you next week. See you soon.